At number 10 on the list is Sinshiro Abe, who went undefeated and won one national title in the 1996 season. He was Penn State's 126-pounder at the time and one of Kerry Kolat's known training partners after he left Penn State. The two won titles back-to-back at 126 and 134 pounds during that year. Abe was a four-time All-American, placing consecutively fourth, third, second, and first, earning him the top 10 spot on the list. Maybe Abe isn't a name you've heard of, and there's likely a lot more national champs you haven't heard of because Penn State has won a ton of national titles, dating all the way back to 1933 when Howard Johnson became Penn State's first ever national champion wrestler. And over the past decade, Penn State has reigned supreme in national championships, crowning more than 10 individual champions in the last 10 years, more than any other school in recent history. This list of Penn State's 10 best national champions in history is based on a number of criteria, including number of NCAA titles, All-American placements, Hodge trophies, wins and losses, bonus percentage, and many other accolades we're going to take a look at. At number nine on the list is another old school wrestler who has more wins than any other Penn State wrestler in history. Four-time All-American Jim Martin was known for winning. He accumulated over 155 wins in one NCAA title as a Nittany Lion. Just five when short of Martin's record is the number eight wrestler on the list. He's the only heavyweight on the list as well. This wrestler won two national titles. Of course, I'm talking about Olympian Kerry McCoy. In the two seasons that he won his titles, McCoy went undefeated with 47-0 and 41-0 records, respectively. In his senior year, he even became Penn State's first wrestler to win the Hodge Trophy. If you don't know what the Hodge Trophy is, that's essentially wrestling's version of the Heisman. The Hodge Trophy became very competitive amongst teammates from 20. 14 onward when you notice a big uptick in dominant bonus point victories. One of those dominant wrestlers was Vincenzo Joseph. At number seven on the list, he made three national finals and won two NCAA titles from 2017 to 2019. He is one of the unfortunate wrestlers who have his 2020 season cut short due to a canceled NCAA championships, or he could have even won another title. Vincenzo was known for his over-unders and throws in high-pressure situations, just like when he pinned reigning champion Isaiah Martinez in the 2017 NCAA Finals. Just like Vincenzo, the rest of the wrestlers on this list have made at least three finals appearances. So moving on to Quentin Wright, who won two of the three finals appearances that he was in, including back in 2011 when he entered as the number nine seed, knocked off the number one seed Chris Honeycutt in the quarterfinals and won the whole thing. Now let's move into the top five, and I have to tell you the truth. That is the truth, Ed Ruth. You may know him now as a dominant MMA fighter, but he was just as dominant on the mat. Ruth had only three career losses, and he won three national titles from 2012 to 2014 at 174 and 184 pounds. He lost only one match during that time to Cornell's Gabe Dean, who eventually won a few titles himself. Ruth eventually avenged that loss on the national stage where he was known to shine. Of his 20 total matches on the national stage, he won 13 of them by bonus points, and most Most of them were by fall. Now that's dominance. Speaking of success on the national stage, there is a reason Zane Rutherford won two Hodge trophies in 2017 and 2018. Zane Train told me he'd put me in a bow and arrow if I didn't put him on the list. So let's talk about number four, Zane Rutherford, who went 126 and three in his collegiate career. His only three losses came in his freshman year, and two of those were to four time national champion Logan Steber of Ohio State. Zane finished as a three time national champ with a 94 match win streak and 53 pins. That's incredible. And remember how I just said the Hodge Trophy became very competitive amongst teammates? Well, Bo Nickel, who's next up on this list, never won a Hodge Trophy while Zane was still in college. But eventually after Zane graduated, Bo Nickel won the Hodge Trophy in 2019. In that same year, Nickel secured Penn State the National Team Trophy with a pin over Ohio State's Miles Martin. That match was spectacular. And if you think this is one of the best national finals for a Penn State wrestler in recent history, click that like button. These top four wrestlers are within such a tight margin for number one, but the reason Bo is ranked over Zane is because Bo is a four-time national finalist and has a slightly higher bonus percentage than Zane. As we keep with that Hodge Trophy theme, there's actually one wrestler next up on this list who's never won the award, but he has won 117 college matches with over half of those by fall. 
At number two on the list is Jason Nolf, who's Penn State's career pin leader with 60 career pins. And it's no surprise because he always came up with innovative ways to stick guys. He won three national titles and made four finals, and he did it with such humbleness and humility, which is honestly something that's often overlooked in today's social media society. So who holds the top spot as Penn State's best ever national champion? Drop your comment down below with your pick, and maybe you've disagreed with some of the things so far, and that's okay. But as we move on to the number one, this was tough, especially considering the competition. But I went with the wrestler who made four national finals, winning two titles along the way, and that is the magic man, David Taylor. While he has only two NCAA titles and others have more, Taylor is a four-time finalist known for his on-the-mat dog. Dominance. He also earned an incredibly high bonus point percentage during that time. Over his career, the Magic Man accumulated a record of 134-3, winning 91% of his matches by bonus points. This is more than any other Penn State wrestler. And while I'm not including international success in this list, an Olympic gold medal that he won in 2021 has to at least count for something. At 157 and 165, Taylor had only three career losses. One of them was a crazy fall from Bubba Jenkins, and two of the others were from four-time national champion Kyle Dake. In the years that he won his titles, he also won the Hodge Trophy. With his great technical prowess and amazing accolades, David Taylor will be known as one of Penn State's greats for years to come. And if you like this video, I recommend that you check out this one linked up right here. And if you're a first-time Fanco Wrestling watcher, welcome to the community.